It's more than likely that you won't need to watch this entire video, but you'll need to just watch a specific part of the video for a particular skill. So all you need to do is when you scroll down to the description of the video, click on show more, and there will be timestamps which are linked to a specific part of the video. This is just an example video, but it works in the same way. So click on the timestamp to jump to the specific part that you need. Okay, so in Google Drive, there's two views you can have. There is a button here which lets you change the view. I'm currently in list view, which means that all of my folders appear like this one line at a time. And then I've also got my files down here, which have a little icon so I can see that that's Google Slides and the name of the file and a bit of other information. However, if I click on grid view, you'll see that the folders now appear in a grid, which some people prefer, it's totally up to you. And also the files show you a preview of what's on the first sort of page or the first slide. So some people prefer that because it makes it easier for them to be able to identify which file they're looking for. So it's this button and that's entirely up to you. So now we're gonna look at setting up folders and subfolders. And a subfolder is simply a folder within another folder. Now, folders are obviously really important to be able to organize our work into specific categories. So if we are using Drive regularly, which we should be, then folders are crucial to keeping everything organized. So the way that we do it really easily, click on the big new button here and we choose folder. I'm going to call this test for the sake of the video and press create. It'll put it automatically alphabetically in your with your other folders. And then basically, if I wanna go inside this folder, double click, and then I can create a subfolder within here. So if you wanna know which folder this folder is already in, you basically can see here by the path. So this is in my drive, the DCF folder, and then the test folder. And anything I create will go into here. So now that you've got your new folder, you're thinking I wanna create a lovely new file to create a resource for one of my lovely classes. So how do you do it? Really, really simple. Once you're in the folder that you want to create the document into, I click new and I can choose from my options here. There are also more options under the more option here, which has got sites, which is useful. Google Maps has got some useful things that you can do within school, but your go-to options will be here. So if I wanna create a new Google Docs, I click on Docs, it'll open up and all I've gotta do is name the document, so I'll call it test and press enter. Now, when I close this tab, you'll see in a moment that it'll pop up here. It's just taking a bit of time to catch up. There we go. And you do this for all of the different types of files that are available here. It works the same for all of them. Now, the only thing that you might want to do is if you want to create one from a template that already exists, if you go to new, and again, this works for all of them, if I click on this arrow here, it'll say from a template. And then it'll bring up the available templates that we've got in the school. And there's also some general ones here. So if you want to do it that way, that's absolutely great too. Now we're going to be looking at renaming files. It's exactly the same as you would do on Windows File Explorer. So on your home drive, USB sticks, it's the same process. Basically, let's say I've decided test is a pretty poor name for a folder, really, because I don't really know what that is. What I could do is if I rename this, I could call it video folders. So nice and easy. Press OK. So once again, right click, rename, call it what you want. Job done. Now, of course, there does come a time where at some point we may need to make a copy of a file. And what we traditionally do is we'd right click on the file, copy, then right click paste in the location that we want to paste it. Google Drive doesn't quite do it the same as this, but it's very easy and straightforward. So if I right click on the file, you'll see there's no option specifically which just says copy. You have to click on make a copy. And when you do that, it will generate the copy and call it copy of, in this case, test. So I've got a few different choices here now. Um, I could either move this into a totally different folder, or 
if I was going to just use this as a template and then change the information in the copy slightly, I would just rename this test one. And there's my copy. So I've got two exact copies of that file now. Now, of course, when we have files within folders, occasionally we might want to move them from one folder to another. And it's very straightforward to do this in Google Drive. And I'll show you the two main methods of doing this. So if you can see the folder that you want to drag the file into, so if I want to drag this file into there, it is literally as simply as click and hold, drag to there. And as you can see, it's now gone into there. But if I want to move this to a completely different folder, then it's a slightly different process, but still really easy. So if I right click on the file and I choose move to, what it will do is bring up this option here. So if I go back, because I don't want to do it in this folder, I don't want to put it in the DCF folder. I want to put it into one of the folders that's in my drive. And you simply navigate to the one that you want. And the one that I want is 202021. Now, I could put it into any one of these existing folders here, or I could make a new folder, and I could call this video. Press enter, it generates the folder, and then I say, yes, please, I'd love to move it here. And then it tells you at the bottom that it's been moved, and that's all you have to do. Those are the two methods for moving files. So what we're gonna look at now is one of the best features of Google Drive. And remember, you can't do this specifically on your home drive. The staff shared area lets us kind of share files by dragging and dropping them in. But the problem is, let me give an example. If I put a spreadsheet into the shared area, a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, uh, me, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Eaton, we're all trying to open the document at the same time to enter our data. And fortunately, if Mr. Eaton's opened it first, me and Mr. Bennett have to wait until he's finished. So the real-time collaboration element of Google Drive is amazing and it's a real game changer. So what I'm going to do now is show you how you share files and folders with other members of staff. So or pupils, if you if you want to, that is possible. It's you know it's not unheard of. So what we're going to do then is I right click on the on the folder, and this works exactly the same for individual documents as well. So it's the same process. If I right click on the uh, folder that I want to share, I click on share, and then what's going to happen is it'll bring up here the option to add people or groups. Now, what I'm going to do, let's say I want to share it with Mr. Eaton. I type in Eaton and it comes up with his name because I've shared one before. If you don't, if you haven't shared it before, then you might have to type in their whole email address. But it's worth it. It's worth it. OK, so uh, I just choose his name from the list. And now, yes, I want to notify him. I could add a message to say, hi, Rich, I've shared this with you if you want to. But, you know, you don't have to. Now, this is important. I can either choose to have him as a viewer so that he can only view the document, or I can have it so that he's an editor. Now, just bear in mind, if you give somebody editing rights, that means that they can delete the file, they can delete content within the file, and they can add other people as well as a few other things. So just be careful, say for example, if you share it with a student, with the access rights that you give them. And then I've done that, choose what I want to do, and I press send. And that will inform him that I've shared the folder with him. And now, because I've given him editing rights, he can look through the file, do what he wants with it. So that is how we share a file or an entire folder with somebody else. So a nice little feature which gets overlooked quite often is actually being able to change the color of your folders, as you can see here, because typically by default, they will be gray. But what I can do here is I can actually show different groups of folders. So I've got this here is green, this here is green, and this folder here is green because they're all relating to staff and pupil training. So 
it's really easy to change the color of a folder. Maybe what I want to do here is at the moment I'm working on the mapping tool and that's of high importance. So I can right click on here and I can change color and I can change it to red, for example, to show that it's of high importance. And it's as easy as that, but it can be really useful. So now we're going to look at a really, really useful tool. And I think it is often very overlooked because we get so many files created and we share so many files and we have files shared with us that sometimes our Google Drive can become quite overloaded with documents. And sometimes it's difficult to remember the exact document or who shared it. But sometimes there are little details that we can remember and we can use these in the search tool. Now, I could click in here and just type in roughly what I thought it was. Or if I click on this drop down menu here, I can change the type. So if I thought, oh, right, it was definitely a spreadsheet that I'm looking for. I can't remember the name, um, the owner. It could be owned by me, specific person, where if you click on specific person, for example, if I thought that it was Mr. Bennett, I could type in the first part of his email address. I click on his name and it would tell me any spreadsheets that would be shared by him. So you can change the location to a specific drive within your different drives, um, or you can just search anywhere. You can search by date, item name, or includes the words. So using this allows you to really narrow down your searches to help you find the document you're looking for. So now we're gonna look at another really useful feature of Google Drive, which lots of people won't be aware of. Now, it's really simple to do. We're gonna look at the activity log and the details of a particular document. And this works on any folder or document. So regardless of which type of document it is, whether it's slides, sheets, sites, docs, it works the same way. So if I right click on my digital work policy here, and I'm going to go down to view details. Now, the details are shown here, first of all, and it shows me who the owner is. It shows me other people that I've shared with and what rights they have. So it says here that the staff development hub teachers can view and the same for the staff, um, for the professional learning hub staff. So also it shows me that anybody with the link on the internet can view this. And then it tells you information about when it was modified, and when it was created, etc. Now, the really useful thing here, and this is particularly useful if it's a shared document. So if there's numerous people working on a document, if you click on activity here, it shows when the activity or when the action took place. And if we scroll down here, you can see all the different things that have happened, you know, where I've shared it, etc. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice way if you're working collaboratively to see who's been working on the document and who's done what. If you're like me and you use Google Drive a lot for storing and working on files, then you may have found yourself in a position like this. So you are doing a lot of work, you're working on lots of different things. And let's say, for example, I am working on my Digital Learning Zone website. So I want to open the Digital Learning Zone. It opens up then. As I've done a bit of work on there, I think actually I also need to open up now my DCF website. So if I go to the DCF website here and I open that now, so that's open. And then I think actually I need to go back into the digital learning zone folder. So I go here, go back into the digital learning zone folder, and maybe I want to work on the feedback form. Then I think I also then need to go to um, the digital work policy. And I do this and I'm opening up all these different things. And in the end, it just becomes frustrating to have to move between these different folders all the time. So I've got a really simple solution to this, and it's called Workspaces. So using Workspaces couldn't be simpler. It's really straightforward and easy. And while you're in Google Drive, the way that we get to Workspaces is by clicking on the Priority tab here. And what you'll be greeted with is documents that you've recently used. Now. To create a workspace, if you scroll down, you'll see this option here, create workspace. Now, what this is going to allow me to do is put all of my documents that I consider a priority at the moment into this workspace. It doesn't move them from the folders that those files are actually in. 
it just brings them together into a workspace. So that way, if you do delete the workspace later on, the files stay exactly the same in the folders that they were in. It's just a way to bring those to the front for you to access what you really need at this moment in time. So if I create my workspace, I'm going to be working heavily on DCF content today. So if I press create, my workspace is here and what it will prompt me to do is add files. Now, it's really easy to do this if you, you can choose from the options that it suggests. But if you choose other files, it brings up your Google Drive options here and you can simply select them from my drive. So if I go to my DCF folder and I'm going to choose my Digital Learning Zone website, so that will be there. Then I can add another file and I can go into my DCF folder again. And I can choose this time my DCF website from here. So, and you can add as many of, as you want from there. But as you can see, they're coming in from other folders. And taking this little bit of time at the beginning means that I don't have to constantly go back between folders and trying to find files all over the place. It keeps them in one place really simply. Now, that's one way of doing it. But then let's say later on, for example, you're working on something and you think, oh, actually, I need to put that into my drive as well. You can actually do it this way. So if I go to my digital work policy folder and I want to put this particular file here, if I just right click and add to workspace, if you have numerous workspaces, it'll just have those listed in here as well. But if I click on DCF and I go to my priority page now, I can see that these documents that I'm going to be working on throughout the day are there now. And all I do if I want to launch them is double click on it and it opens there. So it's a really easy way to manage your files that you're working on for a particular day. And remember, they don't move from your folders. When you delete the workspace, it doesn't delete those files from your original folders. They stay where they are, but it just brings them to the front for you.